Hello, La Costa family, and welcome to worship. We hope you've been enjoying the sermon series, Focus on Prayer. I'm here today at the Prayer Tower, and if you've been inspired by these series and you would like to pray more often, this tower is available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We'll be wrapping up this series and starting a new series in a couple weeks, focusing on connecting with God. That will accumulate with our Get Connected event. This is the event where all of the Casa de Cristo's ministries are in one place. You can come by and talk to everybody. It's going to be fabulous. Also this week is VBX, and we have Mr. Connor and Miss Stacy to tell us all about Family Night. Thanks, Chris. Hey, everyone. It's me, Connor, and I'm with our VBX director, Stacy Medina. We've been running around making sure that everything is ready for you guys for VBX next week. And we want to talk to you about something that's happening at the end of the week. Family Night. Stacy, what can you tell us about Family Night? So we are so excited for this great family event. But first, we have our closing program on Friday night at 5.30 in the Sanctuary, where we get to wrap up VBX, the kids get to sing, and it's a great time for all our family and friends to join us. Then, immediately following that, at about 6.30, we're going to have our first annual Under the Big Top Family Night. Ooh, okay. So what can I expect to see at Under the Big Top? So there's going to be food and fun, bounce houses, entertainment, and all sorts of stuff for the whole family. Awesome. So uh, where do I need to go if I want to sign up? So you go to lacosadecristo.com slash family night. And on that webpage, you can buy tickets, send it out to all of your friends and family, because all are welcome to join us on that night. That's right. We hope to see all of you there family night. And we can't wait to see everyone else at BBX as well. So La Casa family, thanks for being here this weekend in worship, and let's get ready to worship. We welcome you to worship this morning, and let's stand as we share in our opening hymn. to worship this morning, however you may be joining us, and we begin as we always do in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God's word tells us that if we say we have no sin, then we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. 
But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us take a moment of quiet for self-reflection. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on us the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, have mercy. to remain standing as we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit 
and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated. At this time, I'm going to invite any children that are present to come forward for our children's message. And as they come up, uh, we're just going to stand up here because we're going to be traveling a little bit this morning. While they're coming up, if you're with us for the first or maybe second time, we would uh, love for you to fill out that connection card that's in our pew. That's our way of greeting you. And if you would love to receive our e-news, we would uh, love to also share that with you that comes out several times a week. Come on up here, guys. All right, so we're going we're gonna to go on a little walking journey here, okay? We're not going to sit down today, so let's come walking over here, okay? Before we uh, come all the way over to the choir loft here, let's say hi to our cello ensemble, and let's all give them thank you for all they're doing for us today. Thank you. Okay, watch your step here. So you may notice something different in the sanctuary today, and the big kids may have noticed it too. You see all around the sanctuary, there's, pic come on over here, guys. Come on, follow me. Uh, there's pictures of our members that um, are up all around. You may even recognize some of those people, right? And you can see that there's people of all ages all around our sanctuary. And what are they all doing in the picture? What are they all doing? Yeah, they're praying. So, you know, when we pray, we fold our hands, we close our eyes, and we share in that special time together. But the point is, if you look at this, it's people of all ages. There's children up on the walls, there's middle-aged people, there's uh, people who are more mature, and you know, it's great because it doesn't matter what our age is, God wants us to pray. So I'm gonna give you guys this handout today. It's just a reminder for you to pray. It's a couple people praying there. You can draw on it, you can keep it at home, but it's just a reminder for all of us that we need to always be praying, and that's what we're gonna be talking about in church today too. So let's fold our hands. And let's close our eyes and let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you that you give us the gift of prayer. It doesn't matter whether we're very young or very old, but we all have the opportunity for you to be our friend and to pray with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys for coming up. And as they head back, we're going to invite those who are participating in our Vacation Bible Experience this week to come forward for a time of installation up front here and commissioning. So whether you're serving uh, behind the scenes, serving in the background with food, serving uh, as a volunteer, whatever, it's time for you to come forward now. Always takes one to get the ball rolling here and then the rest follow. Um, and as they come forward, uh, we just want to say a few words about VBX. Um, we're very excited this week. We have over 450 children registered for VBX, 150 volunteers, and we are grateful that we are moving forward in mission and ministry and being able to share in this very special time together with our young people. So God has commissioned us in Christ Jesus and has given us the gift of calling. The Apostle Paul said that we've all been given different gifts, the gifts of teaching, the gifts of serving, the gifts of volunteering, the gifts of preaching. And so as we share in all those gifts together as God's people, I ask you, the people of God, will it be your role this week to diligently serve God in Christ Jesus, especially to reach out to those young children who don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? If so, would you answer yes by the help of God? Yes, by the help of God. I'm going to ask you to turn around and face the congregation, and we're all part of God's family here. And I'm going to ask all of us as a congregation, will you pray and support these individuals? As we gather hundreds of children on this campus this week, will you pray for them and pray that those in our community that don't know Jesus may share the love of God in Christ Jesus? If so, would you as the congregation say yes by the help of God? Let us pray together. Almighty God, we give you thanks for all good gifts which come from your hand. We're grateful for the opportunity to serve this week, and we're grateful for the opportunity of Vacation Bible Experience. As we seek to serve, help us to reach out to those that may be lost or confused, and help us to always share the love of Jesus every day. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Can we thank all these folks that are going to be serving in VBX this week? And we'll be... Uh, 
We'll be commissioning all of our, you guys can head on back, you will be commissioning all of our volunteers at all of our services today and also we did last night. At this time, we're going to invite all of you to move out of your seats as you're so able and share God's peace with one another. Let's share the peace of the Lord. We'll invite you to be seated at this time for our special musical interlude. as printed on page 837 in the Pew Bible, 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, verses 17 and 18. Pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. We'll remain seated for our hymn of the day. Sweet heart of prayer, sweet heart of prayer, and 
Please join me as we pray. Almighty God, we echo the words of the psalmist who once wrote, may the words in my mouth and the meditations and prayers in each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. As we sang that familiar song, Sweet Hour of Prayer, we are reminded that we have been on a journey these past six weeks as a congregation in which we've explored all sorts of aspects of our life of prayer together as God's people who call themselves followers of Christ. Three of your pastors have looked at the different aspects of prayer and we've journeyed together in expanding our concept of prayer. Together we've journeyed through the Lord's Prayer and last weekend you had the opportunity to spend some time in prayer on your own as you were in your seats and looking at scripture and spending time lifting up to the Lord your joys and your concerns. And today I really wanna focus on our very lives as a prayer and in the words that Paul shared in that lesson today, you know, two very brief verses from Paul's first letter to the church at Thessalonica, but two very powerful verses that we are to rejoice constantly and we are to pray continually. Some translations literally say of this verse, make your life a prayer make your life a prayer. Now what's going on here and what is Paul addressing? The church at Thessalonica was a young church that Paul had started, but it ran into problems. Problems of persecution and conflict and Paul was away for them from a long time and because of Paul's own challenges and because of his own persecution and imprisonment, he could not return to them. And so he sends Timothy to them. And if you want to read more about this, you can drill down on it in Acts chapter 17, because in the book of Acts, we see a lot of history of the early church. And there in Acts 17, we have the story of this church. And unlike some other churches that Paul addressed in his letters that were in conflict, where he had to admonish them to get their act together, or some other churches in which he kind of went off on a theological discourse, talking to them about what we believe and why we believe it, the church at Thessalonica was a pastoral letter. It was a letter of encouragement. Stand fast in your faith. Don't discard Jesus Christ. Don't listen to all these other teachers that are coming along telling you what you should do, but rather focus on Jesus and him alone. Rejoice constantly, pray continually, make your life a prayer. Thessalonica today is a large modern metropolitan city in Greece of about a million people. The modern city is built upon the ruins of the ancient city, but Paul's word is timeless. Cities change, people change, generations change, but God's word stands forever. So what does this mean for us to pray continually? I don't think by this that Jesus and Paul were saying that we are always verbally praying to God. Jesus himself, and we looked at this a couple of weeks ago, recused himself to a quiet place, but then he got busy with all sorts of activity. But I think what this does is it broadens our concept of prayer, not just to our verbal prayer, but seeing that after our time of verbal prayer and communion with God, our friendship with God can continue. There was one writer who once said, after you pray, always look for signs of God's activity in your life. Always look for signs of God's activity in your life. So continual prayer is not so much a focus on us that we should constantly be verbally praying to God but that we should be in our prayer life. We should be in our prayer life, being open to God's activity and seeing that prayer is a conversation, continual conversation with God. Think about the people you're closest to in your life, your family, your good friends. You communicate with them often. They may not always be physically present. They may not be in the same location as you or the same city or the same home, but you communicate with them often. 
And so it is true with our best friend, Jesus Christ. So when Paul writes, pray continually, what he's saying is stay in contact, stay in frequent communication with God. And, and not only doing that, it, it enables us to see that when you look at your life, your daily activities, you, your work, your leisure, your interactions with others, that God is a part of all of that. Make your life a prayer. Make your life a daily conversation with God. Now, by no means am I saying don't take that set-apart time. That set-apart time is important, whether it's early in the morning or in the evening or whenever you have it in your day. But you see, God wants more than a scheduled appointment time with us. God wants more than a time in our calendar. He wants our lives. And so that's the conversation we need to be having. But here's the problem. We often dismiss God and segment God off from the rest of our lives. So we say, well, here's my prayer time, or here's my church time, or here's my worship time, and then everything else, I'm going to run my life the way I see fit. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. But there's a problem with that. Because then we're dismissing the activity of God in our life. We're not looking for him. We're not seeing his activity after we pray. You know, it was interesting that during these past couple of years, a number of people during the pandemic decided to move out of New York City. They decided that they were tired of city life. Uh, they decided that everything had changed so much in our society and our world that they were going to get out of the city. And so they were going to move to rural New York or upstate New York, and there they were going to start a new life, and everything was going to be wonderful. The grass was going to be greener up there. Everything was going to be great. But what they discovered is all these city folk didn't comprehend of all the differences in small town living all of the differences. For example, what happens when your well water goes out? What happens when you have a problem with your septic tank and you're not on city services? What happens when there's a snow snowstorm and there's not a city service provided to clear the snow? And all of these people who had moved out of New York City discovered that all they had done is exchange one set of problems for another. And that's your problem and that's my problem in life spiritually because that's what we do with God in our prayer life. Because we say, God, we'll give you an hour of worship a week, we'll give you an hour of prayer a day, or maybe even far less, but we won't give you our lives. And then we run around and we say things like, well, my life would be better if only. If only this, if only my husband did this, if only my wife did this, if only my kids did this, if only my boss did this, if only my employees did this, if only, if only, if only, if only, if only this hadn't happened in my life many years ago, if only this hadn't happened last week, because we want to run our lives the way we want to run them. But rather the call of Paul to the church of Thessalonica. And the call to you and me is this, pray continually, and then look for signs of God's activity in your life. That's first, and this is second. We need to understand prayer is not ultimately about us. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not suggesting we don't pray for ourselves. We don't, that we, that we should indeed pray for ourselves, pray for our families, pray for our needs, pray for our joys, pray for our concerns. But once again, we limit prayer so often. You know, there's a cute story told of a, of a little girl in the preschool who was drawing one day and the, the teacher came up to her and said, what are you drawing a picture of? And the little girl said, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the, the preschool teacher said, well, you know, she said, no one really knows what God looks like. And the girl very defiantly stuck her chin out and said, they'll know when I'm done with this picture. And the reality is that that's what we all need to do because we need to draw upon our resources of who God is for us and how we comprehend God to be. And it may be a little bit different for each of us. Maybe you grew up with the image of God as a taskmaster, as a stern judge, as the one who's constantly evaluating you, constantly criticizing you, constantly looking at your shortcomings. Maybe that's one image of God. But the God of the New Testament, the God of Christ Jesus is the God of love and mercy 
and grace. And so for you and for me in our daily lives, that's the constant tension. So you see, while we should pray for ourselves and our loved ones and those we care about, it's not ultimately about us. Prayer is about who God is transforming us into. Prayer is about who God calls us to be. Let me say this again. Prayer is not just about us getting our needs met. It is about who God is calling us to be. Now, religious leaders, scholars, pastors, and theologians have a fancy word for that. It's called sanctification, how we become holy. And becoming holy has very little to do with, uh, with becoming self-righteous or acting better than others or believing we can somehow be sinless or looking down upon others who don't think or act or believe the way we do. But being holy means being transformed into Christ in our everyday life loving our enemies, forgiving others, washing the feet of others, serving others. And this is ultimately what prayer is about. To make our life a prayer is not only to have that daily conversation with God, but it is also to understand that prayer is about more than us. Many years ago, the famous preacher Billy Graham had a great illustration that I've often thought about in my own spiritual life. And it's a wonderful one, because when it's gotten out of kilter in my life, I know then spiritually I need to recenter and refocus on it again. And what Billy Graham said was this, that everyone is given two hands. Everyone's given two hands. One to receive spiritually, and the other to give spiritually. One to receive spiritually, and the other to give spiritually. And the problem we have is if all we're doing is receiving from God, but not giving, then things are out of kilter in our life spiritually. We're being spiritually selfish. On the other hand, if we're constantly giving, but not receiving from God, then we will become spiritually dry and spiritually burned out because we'll constantly be giving to others, but not receiving nourishment ourselves. Jesus addresses this when he says, you must love others as you love yourself. And so loving ourselves is understanding that in our spiritual life, as much as we may want to help or give to others in our family or amongst our friends or to serve our neighbors or our community or our world or our church, that we also need to receive. Two hands to receive and to give because prayer is not just about us. Prayer is about who God is calling us to be. You know, we live in difficult times. There is no doubt about this. We live in times of great debate, dissension, and polarization. But many years ago, a wise man who was a Christian and who was also president of our country President Abraham Lincoln once said these words that I consider to be very profound, and I hope you'll think about them too. It was in the time that our nation was engaged in a great civil war. North was fighting South. Families were fragmented and fighting each other. Literally, brother was fighting brother, sister was fighting sister. Families were split and violence abounded. And in the midst of that, President Lincoln said these words. He said, both sides, both sides are claiming God is on their side. Both sides are claiming God is on their side. Maybe the better question to ask is, are we on God's side? Washing feet, forgiving others, loving our enemies, refusing to gossip, speaking well of others, lifting up others who have fallen down, reaching out as we receive from God, receiving and giving. As we've journeyed over these past six weeks, many of you have commented on how much you've appreciated this series on prayer. And as we will wrap it up next weekend, I just wanna say this, as we continue our very lives, let us not limit our definition of prayer. Let us not see prayer just as something in our appointment book to do for a few minutes a day 
or weak, but let us look for the signs of God's activity in our life. Rejoice always. Pray constantly. Make your life a prayer. Amen. We'll continue our worship this morning with our morning offering. Our ushers will receive our offering, and as they receive our offering, we will also share in a musical offering. Of course, you may also give electronically online if you're joining us online or here in person. Please stand as you're able for our prayers of the church and let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, as we come before you today, we thank you for the opportunity that you do indeed call us friend. Help us to view in our lives that you are our friend and we can come to you on a daily basis. 
Help us to make our lives a continual prayer, to make our very lives a prayer to you. And help us to understand that we can't limit prayer to just about us, but that indeed prayer is about what you call us to do and be and become. We lift up to you all those who are serving in so many ways, O oh God. We thank you for those who will serve in Vacation Bible Experience this week, those who will volunteer, those who will come and be a part of it and attend, and those who will share in the ministry together. Help us to always reach out with your love to our community and to the world unconditionally and without restrictions. God, as we gather, we also lift up to you all those who serve us in many other ways. We lift up to you our military, those who both serve overseas, abroad, and at home. We lift up to you our public safety officers, police officers, firefighters, first responders, paramedics, doctors, and nurses. And we ask that you would surround them all, continue to bring healing to our nation, and continue to comfort those who are ill. And we pray boldly to continue to bring an end to this virus. God, as we gather in this time and in this place, we lift up to you also all those in our community of faith in need of your care and your healing hand. We lift up to you those who are anticipating surgery, Jerry Gilbert and Al Lucas. We lift up to you those who are recuperating, Roger Hildebrand, Buffy McKeon, Jay Farashi, Candy Clark, and Delyn Moore. And God, we lift up to you the following names, knowing that each one of them is a member of our congregation, and each one of them is continuing a journey with cancer, and we pray for their healing. For Mike and Don and Debbie, and for Vern, and for Dan and Paul and Sheila, and for Nancy and Dean, for Char, Lisa and Paul, Karen and Tina and Roger, Linda, Richard and Dave, Chad and Ellen, Sue, Steve and Lynn, Myron, Jean, Carl, and Jay, Matt, Teresa, Al, Carl, Linda, and Sue. We also lift up to you, O oh God, those who are in hospice care. Surround them with your light, your love, and your promise. For Vi Marine and for Donna Wheeldryer. And we lift up to you those in our community of faith who are grieving and have recently experienced the death of a loved one. We lift up to you Penny Durr in the death of her mother, Dottie Wade. We lift up to you Rich Merkins in the death of his mother, Dolly. And we lift up to you Teon Sosi in the death of his grandmother. Lord, surround them all with your peace, your promise, and the promise of Easter. And so God, we come to you knowing indeed that you've given us the gift of prayer. Help us to truly look upon it as a gift, to understand you are our friend, and to have that daily conversation with you. And now together we pray the prayer that your son Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Before we share in the benediction that Aaron once gave many years ago to the people of Israel, let us once again thank our special musicians who have joined us today. We thank them for their time with us today. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord smile upon us and give us his favor and give us his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord.